For your listening information, this episode of the Nerdy Photographer Podcast features adult language and scenarios and situations. You've been warned, this episode is definitely not safe for work. Weren't we supposed to go on an adventure this week? I don't know what you're talking about. We go on an adventure every 10 episodes. But I feel like we already went on an adventure. I mean, I'm sore. How very curious. After quickly inspecting my own memory files, there appear to be some gaps. It would appear we are experiencing some sort of lost time phenomena. And has anybody seen Rula? I can't even remember the last time that I saw her. Oh dear. That is a concerning development. Let me do a scan of the ship. While you're doing that, I'm going to introduce the episode. On this episode of the Nerdy Photographer Podcast, Mel and Dwayne from the Filters Removed Podcast are back, and we're talking about weird Photoshop requests from clients. Hijinks and hilarity ensue. Be sure to stay tuned for all of that just after the break. Any luck with the scan? No signs of RULA 3RDS. Also, I'm not sure we are in the same reality that we were in last week. Great. Just great. Hey, listeners. Are you looking for a way to support the nerdy photographer or just show off your love for photography? Head over to nerdyphotographer.com and go to the merchandise section of our shop. That's right. There's merchandise. There's funny t-shirts. Wall art with inspirational photography quotes. Mugs for people who drink things. Stickers. You take them and you stick them to other things. The kids love these. Going to be huge. So head over to nerdyphotographer.com, click on the shop, and head to the merchandise section to get yours today. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. Hello, and welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. This week, I am joined again by Mel and Dwayne from the Filters Removed Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And we're going to go right into it with the dice breaker. I'm going to roll the die and we're going to, just going to choose a subject. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's all right. It's a nine and it's worst photography or business advice you've ever received. Oh, uh, well, oh, I just had someone tell me to go back and work in physio again and, and keep up my degree because I wouldn't last more than two and a half years of the industry. <laughs> Those were from the elite photographers in my area when I was like new and like up and comer and like starting to get really busy and whatever. Uh, and they're like, yeah, just make sure you keep up your, your degree because uh, you'll get about two years and then you'll be, you won't be a photographer anymore. And I was like, just fucking watch me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Dwayne, how about you? Um, I, oh God, I tend not to listen to a lot of people because I just don't have time for it. Um, especially if it's like negative stuff. Um, but I think the, the one that pops into my head right now is when I was taking photography school, people were saying, don't, don't worry about video. It's, it's not going to last. It's not going to be, it's not going to be encroaching on photography at all. And well, it, (laughs) it pretty much has like it, it, it's here. It's not going anywhere. It's getting easier, which is nice, but just make some reels, Dwayne, just make some reels, make some reels. That's all you got to do, man. Make some reels. I guess I am based on that. Some of the, one of the funnier bad advice that I ever received was social media isn't going to (laughs) matter. (laughs) <laughs> it's not gonna, don't, don't worry about it all you need a website blog all you need is a facebook page just put all yeah, your whatever. eggs in that basket you'll be fine hey that worked for a couple oh, years. My, myspace myspace and um, facebook Go. i was just gonna say no I, I i just use myspace me and tom we're, we're tight we're tight <laughs> awesome kind of the same um, so the lighting's the same. Um, and it's like, you kind of go through like 
you said like this limited number of poses that you can go through and just like make very minor adjustments based on what somebody's face looks like to get everything just right. And then like you knock it out. And so you've got like, you know, whatever, I don't need to spend half an hour with each person. Um, yeah. It's, but then you, everyone who comes through with glasses on, you're like, oh, I have to change uh, the fucking lighting setup. <laughs> no, I actually had it set up pretty nicely. Every time. I had it set up yeah. pretty nicely so that there was like, the only time I had to do that was in there. there and it was weird that there were like three guys who were like six, five who had glasses. It, it, yeah. I was just like, are you serious? Like I've got to see <laughs> stand up even higher. Like, come on guys. Like, uh, can you just take your glasses off? Can we do a couple without the glasses on so that I can get the shot without the glasses just in case? Uh, but yeah, like all sorts of, like that is probably the number one requested Photoshop thing like is, can you remove the glare out of my glasses? Uh, I get that. Um, which, yeah. Which is a pretty, I mean, normal request because it, it's distracting. It looks weird. It's like this big white blob. But have you have you had any like really weird Photoshop requests? <laughs> well, that's fun. Um, I had a <laughs> uh, great segue into uh, this conversation. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had some like personally that I remember one of the first weddings that I ever photographed. Um, and this was like I had just started shooting digital at that point. Um, I was shooting like a combination of film and digital and not that it would have mattered because I had to scan everything in anyway, uh, even the, the film that I shot and the father of the bride came back to me and said that there was a group photo that included the mother of the bride uh, who he was divorced from. And it was the only picture that his sister was in in one of the groups and mom is standing in the middle oh, of boy. The people and he was yeah. like can you take her out of the picture <laughs> because i really don't want her in the, like this picture of my my sister like this photo with my sister in it um i really don't want her in there and i was like uh let me th- like let me think about this and it was i was lucky enough that her arms were completely behind the people on either side of her. Mm-hmm. Like she didn't have an arm over somebody or anything like that. So like it kind of worked. I was like, okay, I'm going to pull her out and I'm going to squish the people together. And I was yeah, really able to, there like, you go. I was able to move them together. But the <laughs> thing was, then you have to think, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people necessarily think about when they do that is you lose this. What's behind the people if you have to move people together. So like the sky behind everyone, there's like blank spots. And like this, so I was like painting in like clouds in sky behind them and the pavement. I had to like like adjust the (laughs) pavement. This is like way back before, way, way, way before content aware fill existed (laughs) and like making sure like the light looked correct on the, like this, like kind of slick it had just rained so there was like slick pavement with like reflections and like oh the sun god coming off of it. and it looked like i gotta say it, i'm not it looked fucking great like when i was done with it. <laughs> but he paid he paid like i spent a lot i spent hours and hours on that yeah to like make it look good and like i thought uh <laughs> like that was probably going to be the weirdest request i'd ever received um over time but like i've had others since where i was sort of like you've got to be fucking kidding me um i don't know about (laughs) you guys but like another one that i can think of right off the top of my head uh was a bride who uh came in and i always tell people like like i give them a whole list of things that to avoid leading up to the wedding um and one of them is like sunbathing, if you're oh, really, if, oh, um, she yeah. had yep. strapless dress and she yeah. had like two big white marks. She had gone out and gotten burned and she mm-hmm. was like, Hey, so can you fix my tan lines in my photos? 
And I was like, listen, whatever goes in the album. I'm sure. Yeah. I'll fix those, whatever. And she's like, no, I want you to do it in all the photos. And I was like, mm, that's not happening. It's like, no. Uh, Tan lines are one of the hardest things I have ever tried to Photoshop. Like in boudoir, horrible. Like if you have like the farmer's tan, like the sleeve lines or like shorts, like forget it. <clears throat> you got to send that, that shit away. I've had <laughs> that happen hard. with um, <clears throat> destination weddings. And I've told, I think even more than like tan lines, like um, what do you call it? Like bathing suit tan lines. Yeah. When the motherfuckers have the sunglass oh. tan line, Ooh, I had yeah. one groom. And I mean, this, this isn't, he works in the oil field. So he's constantly wearing safety glasses. He has to, it, it, he's got to wear them everywhere he goes. And so I'm doing his wedding and the whole time, all I'm looking at, is this kind of like raccoony face with oh. these like white whatever, and I'm just like, oh, you're you're you're, I, at least on a body, it's like flatter or curved like little areas. There's not too many wrinkles or whatever. Like I told them, I'm like, if you want to print one, whichever one you want to print, I will try to fix it. That being said, I knew I was just going to send it away. <laughs> yeah. Because there's, I hate Photoshop. I hate opening it up if I don't have to. But that one has been the hardest, <laughs> I think. The And they didn't even, like, really ask me for it. I just already told them. I'm like, I told the bride, I'm like, if you want one of these printed and you want it printed big, just tell me and I will fix it. But he, he knew what he looked like and he was yeah. fine with it. Like, he knew. Yeah, there's just something about, like, yeah, especially that. But I mean, there's there are other things like, I, yeah, I can like it, if it's on an arm, you can kind of blend it, like make yeah. it look like if they've got a farmer's stand, like you can sort of blend it up so you don't have to do the whole thing. It just doesn't look so uh, stark. Uh, I don't know. Mel, do you have any uh, stories to tell about Photoshop? Well, I have two. Uh, one of them. And this, this story makes me feel really sad, actually. It was like way, way, way back in the day, my early days of doing like boudoir out of my home. So this would have been like, I'm going to say like 2010, 2011, like one of my first seasons. And I had this <clears throat> pair of women come in together kind of as friends. Um, and one of them was very concerned about her face um, and like the lines on her face, just like just normal lines and wrinkles that one might get. But she's she was like in her early 40s and like thought that her face was looked much older than she was. <clears throat> and uh, so she asked for some to be fixed up, but it was a lot of work for me to fix up what she wanted to fix up. And I was new and I, I mean, the retouchup.com did not exist back then. It was <laughs> so like I did what I could, but I wasn't going to do them to all of them. And then, um, what I always did was send a little slideshow after. So the slideshow that I sent, some of them were Photoshopped and some of them weren't. Mm. And so I sent it to her and that was just like a really bad idea. I shouldn't have even sent a, a slideshow. And she was like, yeah, they look great, except for my monster face in half of them. Because I guess that stark contrast, like seeing your face, like look yeah. all of a sudden totally smooth and then look the way that it normally is like right, like back to back is very jarring. And, uh, so I was like, oh boy, that's, I'm sorry. Um, but that was, that was fine. Like, I was like, well, if you want more, like I, I can, I can do more. It just takes me a little bit of time or whatever. And so it was all fine. And anyway, so she replied later and I guess she had done this shoot because she had just lost a bunch of weight and did this big fitness thing. And she looked amazing and felt really confident. And it turns out her husband thought the photos were vile and disgusting and basically said like, I can't believe you, you did this session. This is so gross. And I was like, wow, I've never heard. <laughs> wow. Like 
like, like so all like, that, like she's all worried about her face. Like, and it's like, no, you should worry about your idiot husband. Who's going to tell you that this is gross. Uh, like if he thought they were uh, disgusting because she was, he was like upset that she would take photos with her clothes, like with in her underwear. I was like, what, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the opposite. Oh, yeah. Usually I'm like the man is like super pumped and you know, anyways, mm, mm, I don't know. Unfortunate. The, I know. Very unfortunate. So, okay. This, I, I have another one though, but it's more like, it wasn't a request. It was more like an absolute necessity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I shot, a wedding, I believe it was 2012 or 2013. I can't remember. So far enough back. And, uh, I had another like really popular photographer second shooting with me that day because the wedding was for a photographer. So it was a photographer getting married and she didn't live in Winnipeg, but she was getting married in Winnipeg. And so I was like, Hey, like, I'm so excited. And she had like, um, every different color of the rainbow, like on each of her bridesmaids so it looked super cool it was very bright and like crazy but it was exciting and we had a you know decent amount of time for photos and fun locations and everything so um everything went off pretty well uh we were done early ish that day like we didn't shoot the reception which is interesting for a photographer but she didn't want the reception so uh the photographer and I went out for uh uh what do you call it like dessert or something after um what's that what's that place downtown Dwayne uh that used to be behind U of W uh sinful something anyways oh yeah you know what I'm talking about yeah I know what yeah you're so we about. went there and like this is like just a sidebar but we went there and I um paid the bill. I was like, yeah, it's on me. Drove home, got home and opened the trunk to unload my bag. It wasn't there. <laughs> oh. So I phoned the place. I'm like, Oh my God, is there a ba- like a giant camera bag? They're like, yeah, we put it behind the thing. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. I almost <laughs> lost their whole wedding. So anyways, sidebar. But so then I get home, I, I have to go all the way back downtown, come back home, load up the photos and I'm scrolling through them. And I had this moment and I was like, Oh, Oh no, I didn't take any photos of just the bride and her bridesmaids. Oh shit. Got tons of like the groom and the groomsmen, got tons of the full wedding party, but like, (sighs) like did a bunch of the bride, but I never did that photo. And I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. That is like, I got her and every girl individually uh, it just yeah I, it just so i was like shit what do i do what do i do what do i do i'm gonna figure this out so what i did was i took a really good shot of the full wedding party so i had like all the bridesmaids on one side so i took that <laughs> one half of that <laughs> i photoshopped out the groom and the, his people and i took half of that and flipped it <laughs> like so mirror image the other way and made it like a picture of all the bridesmaids, like turned in towards the bride on each side. And it looked fucking perfect. It must have oh. taken me two hours. I like zoomed in 100% and I was getting rid of little bits and making sure the brick was perfect behind them. And she never said anything about it. She loved her photos so much. Oh. And it never came up. It never came up that like, oh, I don't remember you taking that picture, but good job for creating it. It was like, it was like, I don't know if she just forgot or didn't realize or didn't care. Probably didn't. It all ended up fine. But I was like, I had a full blown moment of like, you know, where your heart like drops to your feet and you're like, oh no. (laughs) I've had that, except it was, I was dumping all my images after a wedding and I was laying in bed, just kind of reading, decompressing, whatever. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, same thing. I'm like, did, did I get any shots to guys? Did I take any groomsmen shots at all? Because I mean, <laughs> the guys always kind of get, get forgot about a little bit just because the ladies take so much more time. There's more effort put into it. Not saying guys don't put effort into it, but we generally go like, yeah, yeah we're good. So I, I like to, I like to concentrate a lot more of my energy time on the women because they go through five plus hours of getting ready. So yeah, I I woke up in the middle of the night or I wasn't asleep yet. And I was like, 
I got to load everything into Lightroom right now. And I've got to yeah. look, I've got, and I, I undershot it, but I still shot it thankfully, but I couldn't, I couldn't imagine spending two hours on a photo. I mean, I would to get one, it because one otherwise photo. on one photo. Yeah. 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 It's uh, I, uh, this reminds me of two different things. Uh, first Mel's other story of like, they reminded me of, there was a time when I had a client come back to me and I shared this in a, an Instagram recently, but it was the, like the client was like, I want to put the lines back on my face. Put the so lines back. That's what she said to me. And I had done nothing. I had not removed any lines <laughs> okay. from her face. So she has a self image of herself that where there somehow are lines. And I'm like, I was just like, I didn't do anything. Huh. Like, yeah. Huh. But the thing was, I, all I did was just send her the photo again. And she was like, Oh yeah, that looks, that looks right. <laughs> and then, People. like, here's the, okay, here it is. And she was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's me. And I was like, it's the same fucking photo. <laughs> and I didn't do anything to it. I just renamed it. Yeah. People, people, uh, they don't get it, yeah. which is fine. They're not supposed to get it. That's our job, but still, yeah. I, yeah. In anticip- we, uh, anticipation of this conversation, though, I reached out to Reddit and to the Reddit photography group and to the Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook, which has about 150,000 members for some of their craziest nice photoshop stories and they came back with some doozies um one of the ones i had here and like mel you had said the tan lines are the hardest thing for you this person had a mostly bald groom who asked if they could photoshop hair (laughs) onto his whole head in every picture like 600 plus photos that he was in from the wedding. And, <laughs> and the, I think the photographer works at Pixar or something. Well, and <laughs> I was, I was just going to say, that's the one thing that I, it, it, it annoys me a lot because everybody that's not a photographer thinks, Oh, you can just Photoshop that. Like mm. it's that it's getting easier. I won't say, cause like your story about cutting everything out and like lining it all up before there's content aware, definitely that just stressed me out because I remember opening Photoshop for the first time. And I'm like, well, where is everything? How do I, I, what, I don't know how to do anything. And then I did horrible, horrible Photoshop edits, but yeah, I mean, like there's a, this feeling is I, somebody else had mentioned it, um, that there's almost this sense amongst the uninitiated just because they hear people say, Oh, it can be photoshopped or whatever. Or, yeah. they, or they see those like time-lapse videos of somebody like creating digital art in Photoshop or whatever that, you know, that can, you know, contracts like eight hours of work into 30 seconds. And you see it like brushes. And it's like, yeah, no, that's like a long period of time. I mean, and they think that Photoshop is like somehow unreal engine for the real world with unreal is like this, it's what they use, uh, how they create like the backdrops in the Mandalorian and like they, they use it for like video games and movies. Or yeah. Now. But it's just like you can just take a three dimensional space and like you can just move, you know, manipulate everything in that space. It's like, no, that, like, that's not how photos work. Like this is not how like taking a picture, you can't take someone and rotate them, you know, so I can see more of <laughs> yeah. their face. Well, even like those little things I can, uh, when people are like, oh, take this out of the background, like, oops, or like, I can even kind of understand, like, remove this person from the photo. If you really hate them, I can kind of get on board with that and be like, okay, this really matters to you. But I don't understand the change this person to what, what they look like into something else, because everybody knows what you look like. Yeah. Right. Like this is very strange to me. When it it's like all of a sudden this one person that you see all the time is like, oh, but they now have hair. 
or yeah, we all, all of a sudden balls. they're like four sizes yeah. smaller. It's like, but why? why? <laughs> Yeah. It's Every, like, when, everyone when knows did, you don't look did, like that. When did he grow that carrot top haircut? How did how did that happen? Because that's what I would do. I'd be like, really, really, okay. You want hair? You're, you're not gonna tell. We're gonna put some emo Phillips hair on you first. We're gonna see how that goes. We're gonna put wave. some carrot top hair on you. Yeah, you know, just have some fun. It's gonna be. I've red. also, I've also got around that a little bit more now because I like to, you know, I like to get things right in camera. So I will put significant others especially if they're just boyfriends on the edge of the frame because then you can always crop it in and just crop them in there might be a random leg maybe there but there's get rid of them that or i have gotten to the point where like i always tell people let's do just the family oh yeah definitely. without without spouses without significant others we're always gonna we're gonna do one with and they're like no bring them in and i'm like we're going to do one without them, just family. And then, and then we're going to bring them in and then they, they can yeah. all be in there. That's fine. But we're going to have one without them in it. <laughs> Cause I have had that. Like I had one where the, it was the same sort of thing where the, the bride came back and like, it was her sister's boyfriend. And I don't know what he did, but he did something real bad. Uh, Cause this was like, <laughs> Just when the photos were delivered, like it, she came back immediately and was like, he needs to be removed from every photo that he's in. Like, every, oh, no. like, like every photo, like, like not just like the portraits, like every yeah. picture that he was in. Like, eh, I don't think that's going to happen. That's How about you just don't look at those specific photos anymore? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I mean, you know, I, just, like, just don't look at those ones. <laughs> I think I had to do. We also go ahead. I was going to say we also um, kind of piggybacked. You you had sent us some of these um, things requests of, of Photoshop stuff, and I was going through them just very quickly. And the very last one, I think, is my favorite. And this person did a wedding, and the best man passed out drunk before the service started. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to Photoshop him into the ceremony <laughs> images uh, yeah. that I love so much because that would be a request. I would a thousand percent do. <laughs> I'd be like, I would ask whoever will photograph photograph. Wow. I haven't had a gummy. I swear to God, I am. I am on the bubbly train right now. I would ask whoever is going to photograph my wedding i'd be like pick out the really drunk people and then sub them in for my wedding party <laughs> afterwards in the drunkest faces you can because that'll make me laugh or i just do it but i love that one that was great <laughs> um i think my favorite in this list is the wedding client from a year ago that asked me to edit out her now ex-husband out of her wedding pictures. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? Like, For what reason? Right? I mean, I kind of like, part of me is like, yeah, you go, you, you go girl, you take that wedding back and you make it your day only. And then I'm like, but why? But why? But, Everybody knows like, that you married him. But then I'm like, but yeah, you felt really pretty. And you're like, yeah, I look amazing. But it's also like, but you also look like a bride. And that that marriage is now tarnished. <laughs> and yeah, it's sort of like. The, <laughs> what it, are you going to do with this? That is a big question for me. Like, you know, like there were like some elements that like remove like the ex-husband. And it's like, to what purpose? Like, 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 if he's gone entirely, like, we know you got married and what are you going to use these photos for? I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I would probably help them with some photos, like do something like, yeah, maybe give her some photos of just her. It dep also depends on like how she, See what you have, like what, what, but you've already done, done that. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you've already done the bridal portrait of just her. Yeah. Unless there's 
Uh, but like, so, so what I, I want to know the context, like, <laughs> is it a photo where she's like wrapped around him and like holding his face? So then all of a sudden it's just air and it's like, <laughs> no, you put in a tree, you put in the tree. Then she's like all the way around with a tree. Then she's just like loving walking, up the tree. holding someone's hand, but then it's just no one. Like, what do you, yeah, like, do you that's just when... Photoshop Jesus into everything? <laughs> just, put, just put Ryan Reynolds face in there. It's her you just know? everywhere. She's just like, yeah, I like the walking with Jesus. She's married to Jesus now. Uh, yeah. Um, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like um, part of me thinks about like dancing photos, like what, like dancing at the reception where people are like, Hey, and, like, just like, I don't know, like just Chewbacca go in there now. Like is what, what's going on? Like who are, who are they dancing with? Like, it's just like this blank yeah. space. Cause you got to fill it with something. You're not just going to like erase somebody out of a, busy reception photo and like suddenly there's nothing behind them or it just like matches up. I would just like slap somebody over them first. And, and I do, I, I want to throw this out to both of you guys. Cause I've never had this asked of me yet. Um, and nor will I, cause I don't think it's cool anymore. Uh, but have you guys, cause it, it wasn't really, it wasn't really cool to begin with, but whatever. Oh, I know um, what you're going to say. Yeah. You damn right. You do. Um, <laughs> have you ever Photoshopped like a dinosaur or something chasing wedding parties? I've never done it just because I've no. never been asked, but no, I was asked to do the shot. Mm -hmm. And I said that I wouldn't do the Photoshopping. Um, the groom happens to work for the VFX company that works oh. that does a lot of Star Wars stuff. So he was like, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And I was like, okay, man, go, <laughs> yeah. right ahead. go right ahead. Go exact ahead. same situation. I was just like, yeah, if you want to give, if you want to do it, have at her. I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> go ahead. I give you full permission to edit that one photo. Yeah. yeah go right ahead. And uh, question, how did it turn out? Mel? How, how did it turn out? I never, I never saw it. Apparently it was one of the guys in the wedding party was going to do it. I never saw it. Yeah. I, I now, I now I'm mad that I didn't see it. This happens to be a friend of mine. So I saw the photo and I was just like, Hmm, interesting. Okay. But it got a great response. Like of course it did. Just going nuts over it. And I was just like, <clears throat> okay, whatever. Guess, guess that's a thing. People like, to see. I don't know. Cause it was cool at one point. I think it's, I think it's ran its course, I which is nice. The best, I think the moment that was over, like that, that whole thing was over. No, I still see it around. Like, but I think that that the crest of that wave, the pinnacle of it was when Jeff Goldblum was actually in a wedding party and they did that like at a T-Rex, they Photoshopped in a T-Rex and he's like, Oh, <laughs> I think his wife was in the wedding party. So they just did it. Oh, okay. Well, that that's fun. That's fun. And it makes sense. He was in Jurassic Park. Okay. This actually works. So he like, <laughs> but yeah. was he sitting on a toilet? No, he wasn't. <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't on a toilet in the movie. That was the other guy who gets eaten by the T-Rex. Cause the T-Rex pulls the Porta John off of him. And then I thought that was Jeff Goldblum's character. That's no, 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 on the no, no, toilet. No. no, he gets hurt. Cause he goes and grabs, uh, another flare. And he's like helping distract the T-Rex so that Sam Neill can get the kids out of. The oh, right. Yeah. It's been a long time. And then he ends up like hurting his leg or whatever, which is why he ends up <sighs> sexy gold blooming on the table later <laughs> with the shirt open. And he's like, life uh, finds a way. Um, <laughs> uh, hmm. Uh, um, you, you have a must, mm, much better working uh, memory than I. I it's <laughs> been movies. it's been way too many years. I know he's in it. That's about how that ends. Samuel L. Jackson is in that movie. Uh, oh, we just watched the Kingsman last night, like the first Kingsman, when Samuel L. Jackson's in it, and <laughs> he's such a great character in that movie. His lisp, oh, his lisp is great. His lisp. And what's her name? Uh, his assistant with her, like, oh, sword yeah. Leg. Yeah. That was really cool. I thought that was an interesting character. I don't think I saw that movie, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's really good. I, I highly, if you want, like, an, a nonsense James Bond slash Austin Powers type thing, 
it's, give it a yeah. go because it's it's very funny and it's mindless. It's hyper violent, but in a not bloody way. Mm-hmm. A lot of oh, blood. Um, it's Matthew Vaughn, and he's it's very stylized. Um, is it like Kill Bill ish? No, not that. that no, not no that gory. Blood? Not that gory. Well, I know, but like a bloodless Kill Bill. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The well, like the, that kind of style. Yeah, of, the church yeah. scene. The church scene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. um. Yeah. Another another one of these on the list. Not. I mean, I I know we could probably go on a tangent. We should <laughs> just just all start a podcast about <laughs> movies. Not that there's not a thousand <laughs> of them out there, but you know. Um. Uh, another one that you had sent that I really love, love Luppel. I was looking at the word couple. Luppels, what Luppels. I'm calling them now. Luppels. <laughs> um, loving, they're, they're love, loving couples. Luppels. Um, patent pending copyright. That's mine. Um, wedding couple. Groom asked me to add back in his missing teeth to all the wedding shots. <laughs> I've got questions and I would like to know how many teeth are missing. <laughs> And if it's just like when one at the them? front, when why you don't them? you just, why don't you just get a denture? Like, and well, here's the thing. So if he always has missing teeth, then that makes no sense. But if he just lost a tooth right. before That's, the wedding, that makes sense. Then there's a lot of questions here. Yeah. A, but like, why long? wouldn't you get your teeth replaced before your wedding? Right. Anyways. Well, there's, I mean, the, uh, there's many questions. Ours is not to wonder why. Yeah. Well, actually it is. Uh, why didn't you get the teeth replaced? <laughs> why are you asking them to be replaced via Photoshop? And whose teeth are taking their place? It's not like you have <laughs> yeah. a photo of it with his teeth. You have to put so much. That's the thing that I always. Assume. You're like, guess what? Steve Buscemi is who I'm taking all oh. these. Willem Dafoe. Oh my God. Willem Dafoe. I'm. Teeth. That's, I'm. That's, uh, I am totally going to no Shane Shane McGowan from the Pogues. We're gonna throw him in there. Um, I, I I am gonna do one of my weddings next year, this year, 2022, this year. I am going to put some Bashem eyes <laughs> in the background. On no, I'm gonna put it on someone. I'm gonna put Bushem eyes on someone. <laughs> it, it's gonna have to be a cool couple that I know will take the joke. Because it's going to be funny, but and I'll see if Mel can uh, see if Mel will catch it. I try to do the although she. I, although, I would love to Photoshop a secret Nicholas Cage into like several yes. photos of someone's and just see if they notice. Put him do in the it. like just kind of in the background or like just sitting the in the reception. Yes, in the congregation, oh. like just yeah. Bl- yeah. Can we? Like he's can a little we? blurred. Like he's just. It's, you're kind of like Wait, yeah. Is that? He's like, because yeah. it's so subtle. Like the whole thing with like do it, putting Pennywise into pictures, and then you figure mm. and you're like, oh my god, that's scary. But this is so subtle that I feel like you could go years without noticing that, and yeah. then yeah. one day your friends going through your wedding photos and like, uh, did Nicholas Cage come to your wedding? <laughs> is that Nicholas Cage? How, how come he's sitting be like, beside? Is it? How come he's sitting beside sexy? He's sitting beside sexy Goldblum. What's <laughs> what's how many how many people do you know? It's yeah. Like, I think we should do it, Mel. We're going to do it this year. The, the secret cage. I think this is a, a pact. This is going to happen. We yeah. Make just like just somehow and certainly like. A of course, very I secret was at your Nicholas Cage. And then you say, yeah, see, you'll still see Nicholas Cage on the street someday. And like, hey, you were at my wedding. And he's like, yeah, I was there. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't deny. <laughs> I was totally there. Did you have dinosaur yeah, bones? That would be totally on that. <laughs> <laughs> Here, this is another one that kind of like is similar to that I have have uh, that was similar to the one that you mentioned, Dwayne, about uh, replacing someone. This one is a bride asked me to replace her drunk face from the reception photos with photos of her face from preparation. <laughs> I would 100% do that because it would be so funny. It would like, it would not weird. look good. <laughs> it's, so yeah. Weird. I'm, th- I'm just thinking of trying to match the lighting. Yeah, uh, that's the, oh, the yeah, first like, thing I thought of. That's what, well, that and just like the just, angle, it would be so funny. It would, it would be like, like yeah, a, sure. Here you, here you go. <laughs> I think that you like, you have to really go with it and like make it look like she's wearing a mask of her own face. Like draw some like little straps on there. Like, like she's wearing a two dimensional mask. 
of her own face during the reception and people be like, that's kind of a weird choice. And you're like, eh, well. oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Why, why don't you want to look like you were drunk at your wedding reception? Like yeah. what? I, I don't understand what the, pro- are you framing this on your, Oh, like, I'm like not what gonna are you lie. doing with it? Like were you Did, I, that? I, I just, I just pictured she, j- just the way you explain that Casey, just think Buffalo, she Buffalo build herself. <laughs> You yeah. cut off her own face <laughs> where she wasn't drunk so and not. strapped it back on because what else could we Photoshop back in? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Can, can you Photoshop my innocence back? Can you Photoshop my virginity back into this, these pictures? How can we tell? Of my wedding? Well, you know, you just know. <laughs> Jesus just, it's, an, it's an it's an essence. <laughs> just put a little just put a little halo on top. You know how when you look at a photo, you really feel like you know the person in the photo. Like you really know that person in the photo. Like you know, you know. Oh well, like, I mean, God. when you think of like, okay, I don't know if you want to take one, but I've got another one that kind of goes with with that as well. Oh, have at her, have at her. Early on in the pandemic, I had a client who was not pleased with mask mandates. And legit asked me if I could Photoshop them all out. <laughs> Photoshop the masks off of people's faces. No. Again, that would be if if that would didn't take four thousand hours, that would be the funniest picture because it would just be painted on. What are you really painted on mouths? <laughs> Just skin tone. Just they like, got no mouths, you, no mouths, no you, noses. Just can you somehow batch it. insert just little tiny teeth? Like, tiny lips. On everyone. Mm-hmm. Little tiny lips. Everybody's got the same face. Like same, like below the nose. Everybody's. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that. So creepy. That would be so creepy. Like just give everyone yeah. the same. Like, well, yeah, I can. Well, cut down on the cost. I got to use the same face. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I oh, can't believe them. It is just like you'll see like guys with a neck beard, but like they're to their chin. <laughs> Which is clean chin. To their chin. It's just some other place. <laughs> oh, you mongoloid neck beard people. No. Oh, don't come at me with that either. I don't care. They, they look weird. They it's, look weird. There's, I mean, I just, uh, it's that thought of like, what are you replacing it with? Like, I have no. Yeah. I have no. You have data. no frame. Of- <laughs> Yeah, you have no reference. You have it's like, do I just pick people off the internet and just go with it? Like, well, I had a a, a person ask me about a <laughs> Photoshop request of like, can you superimpose like this photo from that you took at a portrait session because of the pandemic? These people were not able to be together, and they wanted a photo of them together. And like, could you put them together with a photo that they took? I'm like, I have not seen the photo, so I don't know if that would be possible. Like, the plausibility of something depends on having all the information. Uh, mm-hmm. And I still have not seen the the photo that they were like suggesting things get superimposed Ooh. on. Um, oh boy! But you know, we'll see what happens when that comes in. Um, but it's just you yeah, had just this feeling of like, oh, you can just create reality out of pixels that you know yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't know what these people look like <laughs> yeah i mean what is life but a yahtzee role at this yeah. point right? <laughs> <laughs> why not do that to your photos let's just see what happens exactly oh gosh do you guys want to all just read one more yeah sure uh let's see let's see what the tickles a taint here mm. <laughs> little taint tickling no uh, way <laughs> Uh, All right, I, I think I got one. Um, I'm just going to go with it. I'm just going to run the shit. I'm rolling. Yep. I once photoshopped in the dead sister of a bride. Mm. <laughs> the sister had passed away from cancer not long before the wedding. <clears throat> the bride provided me with a full length photograph of her sister and a full length image of her on the day. I wasn't the photographer on the day. I comped them together. I will say, kind of worked okay but i'll be damned if i would do that that kind of thing again it was creepy to say the least i mean i don't know it it's 
It's not a photo of the dead sister dead. Right. That would be because you remember back back in <laughs> hey, you do back in the day. You know back at the back in the picture. Back in the day, they took pictures right. of dead people and they yeah. like propped their eyes open and they had family around them. And that that's fucking weird. There's, so uh, yeah, I mean I, I should send you guys this photo. There's a photo um I think I actually posted it on Nerdy Photographer. I can't remember if I did it on the Instagram or on Facebook or both. There's this photo of like, it's got these guys with a gun. They're like putting guns to the people's heads. Like it's like old West photo. And like, there's like four guys and like one guy's like got his, like got a knife to, to one of the guys and the other guy's pointing a gun at the other guy's head. It's like it, those two guys in front are dead. They're actually dead. And these other two guys are like posing with them. Like, Ah, I got a gun to his head. And, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, knife at him. My <laughs> but they God. look like they're alive because like eyes are open and they're just yeah. like <laughs> just the dead. St- yeah. Just stand there. Yeah. But like that, oh I get the, God. I can understand the That's desire. So disturbing. Yeah. Desire I can understand the photo. Yeah. I don't know how like I would feel personally. <laughs> Having them, yeah. I wouldn't make that choice myself because I don't know. Like it just feels. Now, are you talking about the sister? Or are you talking about the photo of the men who came uh, after both. death? Both. I, mean, I, I can understand the desire to be like, "Hey, hey Bill, hey. <laughs> not talking back to me anymore, are you?" Uh, no, um, I'm talking about the sister photo. Um, yeah, like I, I can understand the desire to, to have that comp made. But doing it like, and I, I, I don't know. It's weird. Like I've seen all these. I don't know. Uh, it was going around recently. There was one of a, um, a photographer like took a picture of this couple like throwing their dogs' ashes into a lake. And they, oh yes, I saw that. Yeah, and like it's part of this Photoshop group that like the guy posted it in this Photoshop group that I'm in on Facebook, like the original guy, and then it just got like taken like everywhere and like people were like changing the story and doing all sorts of weird shit like online as as happens when anything goes viral but yeah yeah like i understand like the desire there but like also there's a part of me that's like uh, i don't know like i i think the internet also makes things extra weird because you're like who's gonna see this and like yeah i, I don't know like before like before pre-internet i i think if the internet wasn't involved it's like okay this is just a thing that you want for yourself yes yeah. cool especially especially because it wasn't long before the wedding so i get it it's not like years have passed and people people deal with their grief in different ways and i get it that's yeah. fine but what I think is cute, I think it when when people have a little framed picture yeah. of their loved one and they yes. kind of pose with it or they yeah. hold it and whatever. I think that's lovely. I think yeah. that's a or very, have it on the bouquet. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of those, like having like a little locket on the bouquet. Like yeah. uh I mean it's unfortunate that that happens fairly often, honestly. Like there's there, it's uh that it's a thing, but you know, I think that's a really beautiful way to remember people. And like, so that, yeah, they'll take, take a picture like, with a photo of someone. And I think that that's, that's really lovely. I personally, um, and I get it. Like you're saying it, it's close to the wedding, but it like that, like I get, like I said, I understand the desire to do it, especially because it was close to the wedding. I don't know how you're going to feel about that years later. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's mm, yeah, it's so it's a little it's just it's it's like just a toe over the line for me. Just <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's a little eh, yeah, I don't I don't know. It is kind of morbid. I don't know. I don't know. That, that, yeah, like I've experienced lost my loss myself and I'm not like sitting there going like, hey, I want a picture of me photoshopped in with my parents who are dead. Like, uh, I don't know. That just it's yeah, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Mel, do you have one more that you like <laughs> off of that list? Oh boy. There, okay. Which one should I? Okay. This one's a, a bit longer, but I find it very entertaining. Okay. Worst request I ever got was from an otherwise incredible bride. 
her sister, who I didn't like on the wedding day anyway. <laughs> well, well, uh, we've been there. Of course, we of all. course. Um, yeah. Requested that I edit all the photos of her so that her arms were about half the size they were in real life. I thought she was kidding and I said no. Uh, Bride then responded and asked if she had someone else edit them, if I could substitute the photos that were going in her Mm. albums with the edited ones. I thought this was a reasonable request. So I said, sure, because honestly, I don't really care about albums. If that's what the client wants, by all means, have at it. Well, the quote unquote someone who edited the photos was the bride's sister and she used some sort of Snapchat filter or something. (laughs) It looked absolutely positively laughably bad. I asked the bride several times if she was sure this is what she wanted in the book. She insisted. So I laughed and put them in. I am not kidding when I say these photos were insanely horrible. (laughs) Oh, I can just imagine a. I can imagine his, this is why they didn't like the sister. It's, my guess is, hey, can you take another picture of me? Uh, like, it's like I know it's my sister's wedding, but like, I'm uh, very important, very important person. You yeah, might, yeah, yeah. You might know I'm the sister of the bride. Uh, <laughs> oh, but those like stupid uh, yeah. apps where you can pinch in or whatever. I, yeah. I I feel like I don't see it as much, obviously anymore. I feel like people have kind of figured out that the background good. also gets pinched <laughs> and like whatever, but Oh my gosh. I remember, I feel like I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but now that we're talking about a sister, <laughs> a sister of the groom at a wedding, I remember, um, Posting the sneak peek and seeing that the sister, like I recognized her name, uh, liked the photo on my Instagram. And so I went to her, her Instagram feed and I was like, that's not the groom's sister. That's got to be a different sister. And I'm like, wait, no, he only had one sister. And I'm looking and I'm like, I, I opened up a photo and I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, she liquefied her her jaw in every single photo, like to have this really narrow face where she had like kind of a square jaw. And it was so bad that like her neck looked like a tiny little twig. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? In every photo. Just, and it was like, it was literally every photo. And like, I think she also made her eyes bigger. And I was like, who, which, how, how good are your friends that they're not telling you? When you post this, like it looks, I even brought up a photo because I had a bunch of close-ups of her, like with her brother and everything side by side. And I said to my husband, like, who is not telling her how fucking awful this no. looks? Like, this is what she looks like in real life. This is what she's posting on Instagram. It was, it was absolute blasphemy. I, I could not even believe that people do that. And that's just like, uh, that's got to be some sort of weird mental illness to me. Like that, uh, like a specific mental illness caused by social media body where like you, where you can't stand looking at your own face unless it's filtered or like your eyes are bigger or it's, ugh, it's scary. <laughs> Yeah, it's scary, it, scary, scary. Yeah, and it's like those filters are so bad. Like you said, it, it, they, people are starting to catch on that like the whole background is like squished in, and like you'll because you'll see it and like people are like, hey, can you Photoshop this photo? Like, there's a subreddit like give for Photoshop requests, and it's a lot of like generally like, hey, could you you know put my cat on um, in a car like he's driving a car, yeah something like that? But then there'll be like these pictures of like. <laughs> Hey, could you do something with this one? And like, looks like somebody's already done a little editing to it. In case you <laughs> notice the background around the waist, it's uh, like the yeah. whole, everything looks like it's a funhouse mirror. Um, all right, I got one more. It's pretty good. It's all along the same lines as the other ones. <laughs> Another wedding, great. My husband forgot to take off his glasses on our wedding day. Can you please remove them in all of the photos? Um, no, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is always no. The answer would be no. Like, hey, do you mind changing my outfit in all of the pictures? Can you, yeah. uh, I, I would like, uh, you know, a blue leisure suit in every photo. Is that okay? Can you, can you make that happen? Is that something? I feel like that would be easier than taking glasses out. 
Yeah, taking them off somebody's face. Like, the face is, like, the most difficult thing to mm-hmm. consistently, like, do work to. And that's always, I will always tell people, like, if it's on your face, I can't make guarantees. Like, if it's something like that, like, removing glasses or uh, one of the ones that I really hate is when, like, there's hair in front of somebody's eye. And they, oh, yeah. yeah, that one strand, or it's like, or it's like two or three, it's like, like a little bit, and that's just coming in front of the eye. And they're like, Can you just Photoshop that out? And I'm like, Ah, your eye is gonna look so weird because it's so like, there's just, <laughs> can you take, can you take just that? Like that? Out? Yeah, like, yeah, like that. yeah, just that. That, that looks great. <laughs> that looks if you're great, great. If you're a sugar and soul bride or person that I'm shooting, yep, milk and Photoshop everything, <laughs> nothing ever, <laughs> everything. I hate anytime I have to open Photoshop, it's only ever to swap eyes. Yes. Do that. That's probably that's the not. only reason I open it. I, I, I can't think of any other thing I've, I've opened it for. I mean, I've done a little work here and there. Like I, in my amount of time in Photoshop over the years has gotten less and less, especially as Lightroom has allowed me to do more and more things just, just in Lightroom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm talking recently, like I've definitely opened Photoshop, but like in the last couple of years, that's the only reason there are for sure. crazy like shortcuts to do things. Like I think about like the stuff that I used to do in Photoshop that took me hours, which I can now do oh. in seconds in Photoshop. Yeah, It's not, it's not fair. Where did this like select subject? Oh, I love it. I like love it. From, came from and it was oh, in Lightroom. No, they have it now in Lightroom, but they've had it in Photoshop apparently for like five or six years. But it's like a hidden uh-huh. menu. It's in like the filters yeah. menu, like in like oh what? Like I saw a guy do it on TikTok, and he's like, oh, here's how you like quickly select the subject in your Photoshop photo. It's like it's been around since like uh you know Photoshop 2016 or 2017. And I was like, what? And he shows like goes in there and it's like just like pushes button and it's hidden like you actually it's like one of those little side dock menus and you have to <laughs> scroll down in the little tab and then it's just like at the bottom of there and it says select subject and i was like are you fucking kidding me like how much time <laughs> this could have saved me like when i had to do i have like to say like shit? adobe did a really good job at making photoshop so unintuitive <laughs> <laughs> and inaccessible to most people that like they won't touch it or pay for it, which mm. is probably a good thing. <sighs> I like, listen, I, I date myself as talking about earlier, like a, of a certain era, whatever I have been using Photoshop since it first existed. And I wasn't not, not professionally. Like I was a kid, like a teenage kid in a, like a computer lab at a local college, just playing around with, it was in black and white. Like you couldn't really even do like photo work in it. Yeah. It was just like black and white stuff and whatever. But it was then. And until like, I would say the early aughts pretty intuitive, like how it worked. And then they just started moving things. Like as things got added, like sure. Like there's different functionality but they would take things that you used very often and hide them. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. Got, why not? I mean, why not? Why not? It just makes sense. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. Why have, just hide this in another tool that you will never use and or be able to yeah. find because now it's when they first did, like when you could select a tool and like hold down on it with the, you know, mouse button. And then you see like four other tools. I was like, well, how the hell would I have known that? <laughs> if I didn't know that it happens, because like I just happened to like click on pre Google, like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Click on something and like accidentally held it there for a while. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck are those? Like, oh, there's other tools here. Oh shit, that's where the pre, magic pre, is. Pre Google and YouTube. Yeah, I don't know how we did anything. Not gonna lie, you got, you got to buy Photoshop for dummies or whatever. You read books. <laughs> those books were yeah, read books like a like a. <laughs> Like, sissy i'm just kidding i love books like it's the gilded age like it's the gilded yes. age reading books <laughs> by candlelight uh, oh man um, that, that was a great round of photoshop yeah that was i mean that's that's a great and 
you know, because Casey, thank you very much. Number one, for being on the podcast again. And number two, for even bringing this up to us, because it is not even, I hadn't even, it never even crossed my mind of, because obviously we're so used to shooting and dealing with people that I never even thought of, you know, the Photoshop or side or funny <laughs> things. Like I just never thought that, you know, because I, just didn't think about it. So thank you for oh, your yeah. very well things. You're very welcome. It's one of those things like we spend a lot of time. Like and I think as wedding photographers, we spend a lot of time, especially in like Lightroom, doing like edits. Uh and this is the <laughs> I, I will scare both of you because I used to do this I've been doing this for twenty some years. I used to edit weddings in Photoshop, like in like bridge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. before raw images were really a thing like there was like yeah going through and like okay well i gotta like do all of these photos in photoshop because like there's not really you know there wasn't Adobe any other way to do it because it did for jpegs um it was so time consuming and oh god <laughs> but like that, that's my nightmare we spend a lot of time doing this stuff i think it's and it's you know i i had the thought like no, oh, there must be some crazy stories out there. And there certainly yeah. are. Certainly are. Yeah, that's cool. Hey there. Do you photograph people, families, couples, weddings? Are you tired of using the same boring static poses over and over again? Try the Nerdy Photographer's Let's Be Real Unposed Photography Prompts to get your subjects engaged with you and with each other. I developed these over 20 years and thousands of photo shoots. These prompts will help you capture dynamic, natural photos of your clients. And right now, you can save 25% on any of our prompt packs with the code POD25P. That's all uppercase, P-O-D-25-P. Stop posing and start prompting. Hey, this is Ken M. Padawan J. Coach Duffy. From the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour podcast. Every week, the ODPH is talking sports, movies, TV, comics, and more. It's always a parlay of topics on each episode. You can find the ODPH on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and wherever you find great podcasts, such as the one you're listening to right now. Don't forget to check out OchoDuroParlayHour.com, where you can find the links to all of the ODPH social media accounts, links to the bands whose music you hear each week on the show, hashtag 607 podcast info, and parlay points, our companion block section of the show. Thanks for listening to the ODPH. Now get back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Hey, hey, hey. And now for my favorite part of the show. What's that say? Useless information. Uh, this is always death. In Canada specific for you guys. Oh. Uh, Hillary Farr, co-host and design specialist on Love It or List It. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. Mm-hmm. You guys know? I think uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know I, who I, you're talking about. I know who I, you're talking I, about, yeah. I just know Cynthia Near. Mm, okay. Mm. So, no, I know who Hillary is. Hillary has a secret <laughs> past. Hillary played Betty Monroe in the Rocky Horror Picture Show who's the woman who gets married at the very beginning of Rocky Horror. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. She's, she's Betty. She's the woman who's getting married that Brad and Janet go to the wedding of at the very beginning of Rocky Horror. Huh. What? Mel's mind is blown. She's like, you the look, she's looking it up. Right she's looking it up right now. <laughs> You can, you can see you can see the the <laughs> the wheels turning. the screen flickering yes. doing things. I just assume she's looking at porno, but <laughs> oh my god, it is her! <laughs> yeah, it's like a kind so, of. So, what's what's the show called? Love it or list it. It's a real love it show. or list it. All right, it, they got into a lot of trouble because like it, it, it's this whole thing where like people will be like, oh, we want to. We're not sure if we want to move out of our house and sell it. Or if, we oh, wanna, yeah. like, or if we want to like remodel it and they always go over budget on the remodel and yeah. there's always like in, you know, 
it's one of those ridiculous things like, you know, I'm a butterfly farmer and my husband, is, uh, my, my husband makes uh, artisanal uh, wax <laughs> figures and our budget for a new house is a uh, million and a half dollars. And it's like, I'm always like, it's Canadian money. So it's like different, but at the same time. <laughs> so that's, you know, it's a thousand dollars US. It's, so it's you usually know. 500 bucks. Um, <laughs> But like it's still it's still a lot of money, and I always laughed when I watched that show because I haven't watched it in a while. But it's always like, uh, yeah, we. She will go in there, and she's always the culprit because she's the design person who's going to redesign their house, and it's always oh that's a load bearing wall, um, because she's just going to like we're going to give you an open concept first floor, we're going to tear every wall yeah. in this house, and the and the contractor comes in who was obviously not consulted when she was like coming up with the design, and is like. Uh, we can't do that. That's a load bearing wall, and we're going to have to put a beam it's in. It's literally every single episode. Every is episode the same is thing. same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Um, no problem. Where can, Thank you. Where can folks find you and your podcast? We're in the Great White North, eh? Take off, you. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> you've got to come up with in a in a canoe. You've got a portage. <laughs> Portage. portage across portage um, and look for a little igloo and uh you might and then keep going five miles past that and that's where we are <laughs> you can find us at filters removed podcast on instagram most uh most of the time uh and we have a website now filters that works sometimes <laughs> yeah or, or on or on the facebooks <laughs> on the face filters removed just on look, facebooks just look for filters removed and yeah. type yeah. podcast just, in there too. Just goggle it. <laughs> we're in there. And we're on all the streaming wherever you um, listen to streaming things where those happen. We are, we are on all of them. As many as there are. As many as there are. Even the ones you don't even know about, we're fucking there. That's you'll where we are. You'll be surprised. You'll, you'll like hear somebody go like, hey, have you heard of Blueberry? Well, guess what? We're there. Yeah. Guess what? <laughs> Raspberry. <laughs> Strawberry, all of those berry, <laughs> berry streaming services. Not just Laganberry. <laughs> Laganberry. Mmm. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for out. having us, Casey. No. Thanks. It was a pleasure. <laughs>Welcome back, everybody. Many, many thanks to Dwayne and Mel from Filters Remove for coming down from the Great White Norse to talk with me again. Always fun having them on. You can find all of their links in the episode notes and be sure to get out there and follow their very, very funny podcast. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at The Nerdy Photo. That's at The Nerdy Photo. Come follow along for photo tips and tricks, as well as behind-the-scenes stories and plenty of jokes between episodes. I have an idea how we might solve our current predicament. Oh yeah? What's that? There is a software service called Reality Shop that we can use in layman's terms to adjust the reality that we are currently occupying. I just have to download it to my systems. There's a software that can adjust reality why didn't we have this stuff before well they switched to a subscription based fee model and it can get rather expensive can't you just download it and use the software to adjust the pricing structure they foresaw that possibility and placed certain restrictions on the program is there some sort of free trial period yes but as of now we've used everyone's intergalactic email addresses already you haven't used mine yet I'll sign you up. Hey, Fib. While we're talking about it, is this software safe? It does have a tendency to crash. Okay, so then we'll just have to reboot all of our systems. No, it does not crash the operating system. It crashes reality. Noted. Well, until next time, everybody, stay safe and stay nerdy.
Get better, get better, get better, get better. Listen.